Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Rosalind Hamlin, and I welcome you to Midweek Spiritual Nuggets from the Bethlehem and Faith Moravian Congregations in Barbados. We thank you for joining us via Facebook or YouTube as we pause in the middle of the week at this midday hour to reflect on some nuggets of truth from God's Word. Before I share today's meditation, let me share the Moravian daily text for today, Wednesday, September 11, 2024. The watchword reads, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Psalm 51, verse 10. The hymn writer says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Anoint me with your spirit free. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The Doctrinal Text The aim of such instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The supporting hymn verse, Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, O ancient of days, Almighty, victorious, your great name we praise. Let us pray. God, please guide us to follow your faith in our daily routines, creating us a clean heart and watch over us as we make better choices in how we live, love, and follow you. Grant us this day, O Lord, to experience of your faithfulness again and to give you praise and thanks for the same. Guide us now as we look into your word. Help us to glean new truths from it and to seek to walk in those truths and live by those truths. Speak to us then, O Lord, and help us to hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 17 to 24. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, what have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring up my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Thanks be to God for his precious word to us. Last week, we saw the faithfulness of God towards Elijah. 
and in the circumstances towards the widow at Zarephath. Elijah needed to be sustained by God in the midst of the famine, and so he was sent to this widow so she could provide for his nutritional needs. Throughout the famine, Elijah was fed by the widow as God promised. But throughout the famine, God also promised to provide for the widow. He pledged through Elijah that the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day the Lord, that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And God remained faithful to that promise. Then the widow found herself with a new dilemma. After God had saved her and her son, she was now being faced with a very severe sickness in her son. She challenged Elijah about causing her such calamity as the death of her son. But God would be faithful to this widow. He would use the man of God to deliver her son to her again. And so Elijah intervened and sought God on behalf of the life of the child, and he was restored to his mother. Now, it was not only Elijah to whom God was faithful. He was a man of God, and so we may reasonably expect him to be supported by God. We would readily accept that God would use any means possible to provide for him, including the book Kenneth and the Ravens. We can also understand that he might use other human beings to help his servant as he used this widow. But why would he have much concern for this foreign woman? to whom he was now being faithful. This, my friends, this fact emphasizes the faithfulness of God. Whilst we expect him to do certain things for certain people, he shows that he can do anything for anyone. We are all significant in the eyes of God. And while society may categorize us according to social status, and may see us as important or insignificant, as belonger or foreigner, God sees and addresses human needs in spite of those classifications. She was a foreign woman, two stripes against her, foreign and woman. According to culture, we never see a foreigner as deserving of the same things as nationals. You know how we think and behave towards non-nationals. And according to the culture of her day, a woman was never worth noticing. A woman was not even considered a person in her own right. Any significance she got was from being the wife of some man. She had no significance on her own, only through her husband. So this widow at Zarephath was a nobody and a foreigner, yet God intervened here on her behalf. When then we say that our God is faithful, that is not restricted to some persons only. God does not see us in terms of foreigners or nobodies or any other or any particular gender or class, or strata, no classification. As Galatians 3.28 says, There is therefore neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor slave, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. We, my friends, are all the same before him. He treats us without partiality. And he is faithful to one as to the other. Hence, he, is, he was faithful to this woman and healed her son, restoring him to life.
She had served him by giving support to his servant Elijah. Now Elijah would intervene on her behalf and she would experience God's goodness. And that is how God's faithfulness works. He does not pick and choose where we are concerned. He treats us all the same. He is available to one as to the other. Whatever our need, we have only to lay it before him. We do not have to wonder if he is available. His word to Joshua is the same to us. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. And the Lord thy God will be with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua chapter 1 verses 5 and 9. There is no special criteria for those to whom God would be faithful, except using the privilege to call upon him. So he is available to you too, as he was to Moses and Joshua, and clearly to Elijah and to this widow and her son. It does not matter who you are. God is available to you. Our God is faithful. Let us pray. A loving God, thank you for your faithfulness to us in the past and your further commitment to us to continue being faithful. Help us, therefore, to trust you with our concerns so that we may always enjoy the victory. Amen. Before we go, here are a few reminders for you. Our missionary service at Faith in Six Row St. Philip is this coming Sunday, September 15th at 8 a.m. The preacher is the Reverend Alban St. Hill. The, missionary, the mission rally at Faith comes off on Sunday, September 22nd at 4 p.m. We invite you to share with us as we consider the theme, Our Faithful God is Able. The missionary service at Bethlehem will take place on Tuesday, September 24th at 7.15 p.m. That is Tuesday, September 24th at 7.15 p.m. And we invite you to come and share with us as we reflect on mission, our own part and role in mission, and seeking to reach out to help others. Sunday worship opportunities at Faith, 8 a.m., followed by Sunday school at 9.45 a.m. At Bethlehem, 10 a.m., preceded by Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. The provincial theme for this triennium is shift, reclaiming our identity, renewing our purpose, and reigniting our passion. For this year, 2024, we focus on renewing our purpose. We ask you to note that Monday, September 16, is Minister's Covenant Day throughout the Moravian Church around the world. And so we urge you to be in a prayer for our ministers and their spouses as we seek to renew our covenant with our God and with each other. We look forward to sharing with you on these occasions as well as our Sunday online services at 10 a.m. via Facebook and YouTube. Join us again next Wednesday for another finding of midweek spiritual nuggets. 
and join the Moravian Church Barbados Conference for our radio broadcast, Moravian Voice, on Life 97.5 FM at 9.30 a.m. on Thursdays. You can also follow Moravian Voice on Instagram at Moravian Voice or on YouTube at the Moravian Church Barbados Conference. May you have a blessed week, recognizing the faithfulness of God to his children. And so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.